This week's screencast will be introducing Pandas, a data manipulation tool. It can consume data in all types of forms, CSV, web data, JSON, all kinds of stuff. We'll be consuming some data, manipulating that data using the data frames that, data structures that Panda includes, which are namely the data frame and the series objects. We will then use some of that data, we will move it around, we'll resample it, and we will also then begin to visualize it using a tool called Vincent. So before we begin, we need to install a few things. So this is a fresh uh, virtual env install. So what we're going to do is install NumPy. If be NumPy becomes an issue to install on your machine, what you'll need to do is go to their website, figure out what you need to install. On the Mac, it's pretty straightforward. It's brew install gfortran, and then everything should just work. Um, you also have to have the, well, if you have Python running, you should have the Xcode tools, so you should be okay, which is the compiler that compiles everything on Mac. On Linux, it's fairly straightforward, apt to get app packages, and then go from there. Once we have NumPy installed, we will then install Pandas and Vincent. Next, we're going to install Pandas. Next, we're going to install IPython so we can have the notebook. We're also going to install IPython. We're going to install Tornado, which IPython uses, and PyZMQ. Okay, awesome. So it should be up and running. So all we need to do is go IPython notebook. Awesome. We need to create a new notebook. We're going to call this one. Since we're going to be using stock data here, we're going to call it stocks. We're going to simply do something like this. So we're going to simply start off by calling our first portion here called call it pandas. Just have it be a playground for the pandas data points here. So let's start by importing a few of the data structures that pandas include. So from pandas, import data frame and series so we're going to first begin with the series data frame which is pretty awesome what it's designed for is explicitly handled in the time indexed uh data point so let's say yesterday you had five apples today you have four tomorrow you have two and so on and so forth that's the type of thing that the series object is really good at handling um i'm going to start off with the hello world version of series objects what you need to do is pass it some values so these would be your apples okay so let's say you had one two three and four and then you also could pass an optional index which would be something like this so which would you you'd use to index the thing as i said before these are most useful when they are when they are dates or date or time stamps or something that's happening over a period of time which is the real power of series something like stock data as you'll see later in another example but what you can see here is that oh, missed a comma there what you'll see here is that pandas takes that and makes it into a representation of data format now it's representing the int as 64s the series data only has things across the top so you understand what is going on. So let's say we'll only have one set of values. So these sets of values are in 64s. But if I were to go in ahead and make these all floating points, I believe they would be float 64s. And then that's how you go about doing stuff like that. So another thing you can do here is you can go s.index, and that'll give you what the, the index column. As you can see, they're objects. There are literal strings saying that they are of the, that what the index is, and that's how you go about it. You can do all kinds of other things, which you can dive into the documentation to get. So you can do the mean of that, which ends up being the sum of all of them divided by the length. And there's a bunch of other options that you can do with series data with pandas. 
Next, I'm going to show you an example with some timestamps over time and other things you can do with series. So the very first thing we'll need is some random data. So we're going to go import random. Then we're then going to go the data is equal to random dot rand int between zero and ten thousand for x in x range of ten thousand. We're then going to go provide an index. That index will be the time index. It starts on January 1st, 2013. The periods will be, so the number of samplings we'll take is equal to the length of data. And how frequently they're sampled is provided by the frequency. We can then go something like this. So we're going to go minutely. Um, we're then going to go s is equal to series data index is equal to index. So what we merely did was first create some data. Then what we did was create a date time index and provide start and frequency. So this is a minimally frequency. So when we look at our object here, what we should see is, okay, the first minute in January 1st, 2013, second minute in January 1st, 2013, and so on and so forth. So as you can see here, we have a thousand things. Frequency is minutely of type in 64. So that's how the series objects look. You can do a bunch of things like tail once you're dealing with a lot of data. So you can look at the last, by default it says five, but you can provide a number here like 10. Um, head is vice versa, it'll give you the first the first 10, like so. The really cool thing that you can do though is, so seeing that we have S now here, we'll call, we'll call that S, we'll evaluate that out. All right, I believe that's the case. Next we'll go S daily is equal to S dot resample that at a daily frequency. So what that ends up doing, it ends up resampling all the series objects that you have in your data, and it gives you all of the days they responded to. So according to this, it takes over 10,000 samplings minutely, gives us about four, seven days of data. And as you can see here, the totals for each of those days come together and they're added together. So that gives you an easy way from going from a very low frequency to a very high frequency. You can you can fill forward or fill back. If you go from a low frequency to a much higher frequency, you can fill, you can carry forward. That's generally how you use series objects and that's where really their power lies. Next, let's go into data frames. In the previous example, I said this was calculating the sums. This is incorrect. It's actually calculating the means in order to calculate the sums, you need to pass a how method to the resample, which will then resample and then sum the daily values. So it'll sum all the values that are in the particular day here. So when we run this again, the numbers are much longer, makes much more sense. So let's talk about data frames next. So let's quickly write up a simple example here. Let's just title our section called here, call it data frames. Fantastic. We will now then construct an example. So we're going to call data one, one object. It's going to be a similar structure as what we had here above. Maybe we'll vary the numbering here, but it's going to be something along those lines. So we're going to do 10 of those just so we can get a fair thing. And this one will be, let's say, between 0 and 10. And then for the next one, what we'll do, end up doing is something like this. Those are simple first bases. We'll call it data two. It's equal to something similar. We will call, give it also 10, but it'll be between 11 and that number. So we have two data sets that don't overlap. Awesome. Now, how do you go about creating a data frame? Data frame is, takes a dictionary of objects. 
So we can create a data frame like so. We can, it can be JSON. We, they have all these convenience methods that allow you to consume all kinds of stuff to CSV, from CSV, all types of stuff. But if you give it a dictionary of lists, it'll do the same thing. So in which that's what we're going to do. We're going to call it data one here. Copy all that stuff, data one. Let's call it data one. And the same thing here for data two. And we now have a data frame of 10 lists, 10 objects, so 0 through 9. With data 1 oh, consisting of numbers between 0 and 10, and data 2 of numbers consisting between 11 and 10,000. So you see that it's kind of cool. You have the frame there. So what type of things can you do with it? Well, you can do things like this. You can, have, you can add a new column simply using the dictionary syntax that you're hopefully mostly familiar with. Um, you will then do something like this. So you'll go df data data one plus df data two, and that'll do a column-wise addition between the two columns and give you a new column with the resulting data. So then, once you call that, you'll have um, you'll need to print the F again, and then you'll have a new column with the summation of the two things. So as you can see here, you added them together and all that. There's much more possible with data frames, but that's what I'm going to touch on today. Next, we're going to move on to graphing some of this data that we've been, we've been building up using Vincent. So seeing that we have some stuff, well, let's get a bit of a different data set. This is kind of simple and rudimentary. Let's maybe take a data set from like a stock site or something like that. Luckily, there's something built in in pandas that allows us to get new data sets from things sites like Yahoo. So we're just going to do a few imports to get Vincent up and running. We're going to import from Vincent dot pi and b notebook import init yeah, internet vg and display Vega. Once you have those three, we're going to go in it, add the JavaScript needed to do that one, as well as the JavaScript needed to do this one. Once we have that, we're going to go from pandas. And this is what lets us get the real time data set from Yahoo data reader class. We're going to assign that to some data. So we're going to go data reader ask for one of my favorite companies stock Tesla we're gonna also then ask from the source Yahoo and we're also gonna go specify a start time so the company went public in 2012 so let's get all the data from sorry from 2010 let's get all the data from 2010 and that'll sh give us a data frame Hopefully, no oh, typo there. And that gives us a data frame with 777 entries from June 29th, 2010 till today. What we need to do though is just get a slice. So as I said before, the head allows us to get a smaller section so that it, when you try to print it, it won't group up like it has here. Um, so you can see that. So you can see that it has many columns. It has an open price, a high price, a low price, a close price, adjusted close, and volume. So that allows us to figure out what we're interested in. We want to see what the daily highs were since the beginning of their stock. So to do that, which I hadn't mentioned before, you can splice along columns, which will return series sets, as you saw before. So let's say we're interested in the high. All we're going to do is go high is equal to that, and that will be a series. So we have to print high, and that'll give us a time series object like we dealt in the first example, with a date and a high price. So let's go. Let's go and graph that. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to resample. So our axes are all the same, even though the data set is set to be to be on days. It actually has a time attached to it if you inspect it further. So we need to resample it so it's grouped together per day. 
So we're going to go high is equal to high dot resampled daily. And how do we want to how do we want to sample that? We want to make that a sum, and there's only one per day, so it won't actually change any of our values. Once we have that, we're going to declare a line from Vincent. So we're going to Vincent dot line, and that'll give us a structure of a line graph. Then we're going to pass in some tabular data. Tabular data being the, the high values here that we just collected. High. And then we're going to simply go display line. And that should return to us a graph of all the It is resampled, not resampled. And that should give us a daily trend of the, the high prices for all the stuff. Now, this is a bit squished. Vega, I mean, Vincent allows you to edit the way the thing looks as well. So you can go line.update. You give it some padding. So as you can see, we get all these little beautiful graph here with a nice structure over the period of the time that we selected over multiple years. And then we have year gaps and breakages. So that's your introduction to Vincent and Pandas. Um, very powerful tools to get some impressive graphics up and running. I hear there's a new version in the works, so keep an eye out for that one as well.